Hello, Chameleon Wranglers. We are having a video outside, so you may hear some birds or such around, but that's because we just have the natural ambiance going on. Today, we're going to be talking about the helmeted chameleon, Trioceros honelii, or helmeted chameleon, is a charming little live bearer that comes to us from Kenya. Now, it usually comes with the a little bit more flashy Jackson's chameleons, but this little Honelii has created a kind of a cult following of its own. And so let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, if we touch on natural history first, just get an idea of what we're working with. It shows that we have a little bit of a challenge with this little guy. Trosserus Honelii comes from a wide range that covers a number of elevations all around in Kenya and in Uganda. You'll find them at the tip of Uganda around Mount Elgon. Now, we don't see a Honelii from uh, Uganda because Uganda does not export them out. So everything you see is coming from the Kenyan locales. Now, the problem is that there are a lot of different locales and elevations, and when they come in, you just don't get uh, any information as to where they came from. Now, this is significant because, you know, the farther up in elevation we go, the more UVB they like to have, and the colder the nighttime temperatures, and perhaps the uh, more sensitive they are to heat. So where they come from is significant for those of us who want to put, give them proper husbandry. Now, I will be talking about husbandry today, and it's more of a generalized husbandry for if you get one and you don't know where it's from, well, you can use this and you'll do okay. But I'm really hoping that in the future, we get to be more aware of the differences of the needs between the different uh, locales of helmeted chameleon. Now, as far as the husbandry of the Honelii, we generally say you can keep them just like Jackson's chameleons. They come from basically the same area. Now, there's one thing we definitely need to talk about, and that is cohabitation. Honelii is very tolerant of each other. And because of this, many breeders keep them together, and they say that they can stay together. I don't like this. There is no chameleon that has social aspects to it. And it's like the different species are on different areas of the gradient between I am going to kill you if you come into my cage all the way to I will tolerate it and just accept low grade stress. And Honelii are on the tolerance side. And so very often they get put together. And since they have a small body, they are put together in small cages. Now, it is difficult for me to tell you that if your breeder keeps them together, that uh, you should do it differently. But I feel strongly that if you want to give them the best husbandry, you keep them separately and give them a large enough cage that they can move around. So although I will, on my care guides, I will say that the minimum cage size is 18 by 18 by 36, or better yet, the 36 by 18 by 36, you will hear of people keeping them in smaller enclosures. But here at the Chameleon Academy, we are about pushing things forward and giving the best experience in the best husbandry, not the minimalistic husbandry or what you can get away with. It's important that I let you know what my personal biases are ahead of time. I have had a number of locales of Honelii and I've bred them and I got to say they are a joy to work with. And if you want to get involved with them, you will find that there is a small community. They may be small, but they're definitely dedicated. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about husbandry here. I mentioned cage size. They can go into cage sizes uh, smaller than your standard panther chameleon. But if you've got a two by two by four foot tall cage laying around, well, use that. But like I said, an 18 inch will do just fine, especially if you keep them individually. They are live bearers, and they will give you the same surprises that Jackson's chameleons will. So if you get a female in, just assume that there may be babies in your future, and they may be a total surprise. If it is a large clutch that she's developing, then you'll probably see the typical rotund shape around the belly before she gives birth. But if it's a small clutch, you may not get a whole lot of 
warning before you all of a sudden have uh, 8 to 12 babies running around inside that cage. The typical forest edge style interior is perfect for the Honelii. Now, because these are montane, we want to give them low temperatures during the day, say the uh, low to mid 70s as an ambient temperature and a low basking temperature. Like 82 is what uh, I'm recommending. And the nighttime drop, this is important, like it is with Jackson's Chameleons. We'd like to get it down into the 50s or the low 60s. Once again, depending upon where the Honelii came from, they would like their nights cold to colder. And this is one thing to really keep in mind before you bring these uh, chameleons into your house. Uh, just like Jackson's Chameleons, can you give them the nighttime drop? If you don't, then they will slowly degrade in health over the months to the point where they get sick one day you don't know why and you just go on saying yeah chameleons are fragile well no <laughs> once they're given their proper conditions it's amazing how hardy they are so nighttime drop is important another thing we've noticed with onelii is that they tend to like higher uvb than some of our other species the uv index of three, which is good for panther chameleons and veiled chameleons, doesn't always make Honelii happy. And so we've been experimenting and trying. And when I say we've, I mean people in the community, people I've talked to uh, in an informal manner. But the amorphous we have been working with giving them higher UVB, like UV index of four or five. And so if you go to the Chameleon Academy Care Guide, you'll see that the distances and the UV index for basking is higher than Jackson's Chameleons. Though keep in mind that we do notice that some Jackson's Chameleons may be looking for higher UVB as well. So this is still an area that we're really looking into, and uh, I expect that we will be changing these values as we get further along and we learn more. For humidity, I like to give about 50% during the day and 80 to 100% at night. I do like to fog my Honelii, and they seem to uh, do very well. But, uh, of course, I fog at night. If you look at my Chameleon Academy typical hydration schedule, that works just fine for Honelii. I do give them a supplementation schedule that's very much like my Jackson's Chameleons, and that is calcium every feeding. I use Arcadia Earth Pro A, that's calcium and B pollen, and Rapashi Calcium Plus Low D once every month. Now, if you get a female, well, then you're going to have to be ready for babies. And Honelii babies are incredibly cute, but they're incredibly small. And so be ready for, with your fruit flies. You can start off with the Drosera melanogaster. That's the smallest fruit fly. And then give them progressively larger food as they can take it. Get them onto pinhead crickets as soon as possible to really bulk them up. And that, my friends, is Trioceros honelii husbandry in a nutshell. Help! I'm in a nutshell! Now, please understand that uh, this husbandry is just a high-level review. Go to chameleonacademy.com to figure out the details as to how to execute the hydration cycle or put together the forest edge. Now, if you're able to provide them the conditions, especially that nighttime drop, then I'd encourage you to get involved with this wonderful species. There is a community that's built up around it. It's a small, intimate community. But you're going to have some friends and you will have people that would be happy to trade offspring and trade bloodlines. And in fact, just hang out here at the Chameleon Academy. Come to the live sessions because there's a lot of Honelii people that come to the live sessions, hang out, and they talk Honelii. And with that, I'm going to share a montage of some of our community's favorite Trioceros Honelii. <laughs> Thank you. If you would like to know more about Trioceros honelii in the wild, there's no better resource than this book, 
Mountain Dragons, the author Jan Stabala took over a month traveling the highlands of Kenya, documenting the chameleons that live there. And the photography is gorgeous. If you are interested in learning about all the different color variations of this wonderful little chameleon who is featured on the cover, then this book here is available at dragonstrand.com. And just taking a look through this book, you'll see the gorgeous photography and Triosaurus honelii features prominently in this book, as well as different forms of the Jackson's chameleon. You may not have realized how variable both Jackson's chameleons and the helmeted chameleon are. This book has some of the most gorgeous photography that we have in the chameleon world. And not only is it great to look at, but it talks about each locale. It talks about the conditions that he finds there. And it's actually a little bit entertaining as he talks about his adventures being out in the Kenyan Highlands. In the back, you're going to find some species profiles. It's going to talk about some elevation and natural history. This is, without a doubt, one of my favorite books. This is self-published by Jan, and there are limited books available. So this is another case of go ahead and act now, because it is not certain that there will be a second printing. The link to buy this book will be in the description. Thank you very much for joining me for this Chameleon Appreciation Day for Triosaurus Honelii, the Helmeted Chameleon. Have a great day. Take care of yourself. Be excellent to each other. And I'll see you next time.